you've led and conducted numerous uh, research projects both, um, at PCRM. You've published in journals like Diabetes Care and the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Uh, can you tell us how, uh, what you know about the connection between plant-based diets and beta cell function? Right. Um, I have to say we weren't intending to be able to show that beta cell function would improve. And by the way, for anybody who's a little bit new, new to what we're talking about, the beta cells are in the pancreas. Those are the ones that make insulin. And we took a much more naive view of this at first. Um, we were just looking at observational studies. People who have followed mostly plant-based diets tended to be thinner. Their risk of diabetes was much less. So we thought, all right, let's test it. And we started doing tests in people with type 2 diabetes. And man, is the uh, low-fat vegan diet helpful for them. Um, it helps a number of people to reduce their medications, maybe get off them. Um, it reduces hemoglobin A1C much more than a conventional diet. In, in uh, our NIH uh, trial that we began in 2003, we found that the average person who was medication stable, you know, you're not changing their medications, you're not changing their exercise, you're trying to keep everything stable, but their A1C dropped about three times more than on a conventional diet. And then we've applied this in a lot of other conditions. But more recently, we started looking at beta cell function. Um, the importance of this is that type 2 diabetes starts with insulin resistance, where the muscles are acting up and, and, and not taking insulin's direction. The beta cells have to make more insulin. And then when the beta cells start wearing out, they can't keep up, and the person is diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So what we recently found is that in the course of people using a plant-based diet, not only does their insulin resistance improve, their beta cells start to improve, um, start to improve their function as well. We're continuing to look at that. We're doing some follow-up work here as well. And it raises the question of why. And I don't know the answer yet, but I'll tell you what I suspect. Um, in the same way as in the muscle cells, we see the buildup of fat within the cells interfering with the mitochondria, which are the little furnaces inside the cells. Um, Fat builds up in the muscle cells. The mitochondria don't work very well anymore. Insulin can't signal it very well. Same thing happens in the liver. We think something similar is happening in the, in the beta cells of the pancreas where the fat accumulation is interfering with their function. And if we get the fat out, maybe they respond better. So uh, we'll see, but it raises the intriguing possibility that not only are you attacking type two diabetes by getting the insulin resistance taken care of, but you're actually improving the pancreas's ability to produce insulin to keep up better. And then, and then it raises also other questions for what about a person who's teetering on the edge of type one? Um, it may be in a family where you know that there's a big family history of type one diabetes. And let's say everybody is raised uh, breastfeeding as opposed to being exposed to cow's milk antigens and you do everything you can to prevent this. Could you protect and restore the beta cells so that you have a uh, lifelong beta cell function. Um, rem remains to be seen, but I think it would be a wonderful thing to test. Uh, I'm telling you, Dr. Barnard, it's a fascinating topic with so much new information being discovered about type 1.5 diabetes and people having you know, compromised beta cell production with some antibodies and what's possible, what can be happen, what, what's potentially possible with early intervention can you preserve that beta cell function and make their life a heck of a lot easier? Um, it's really interesting research, so it's cool to see you guys doing that.